There are several reasons why I talk about the alt-right like I do. One of them is because of things that I have heard and personally experienced uh, when I was little to the point when I was in my 20s. I'm almost 44 years old. And a lot of the things that I remember from uh, as a child into my teenage years are some of the things that adults would talk about. And a lot of these things were pretty much the same messages I'm seeing coming from a lot of those on the alt-right, including those like Milo Yiannopoulos. I think Milo Yiannopoulos, personally, I think he's... He just looks for whatever ways he can to get in the limelight. And he's a very smart person. Milo is not a stupid person. That guy is smart. But I think most of it is just finding some some platform to make a living from. You know, which is fine. Um, you know, it's sort of uh, similar to like Ann Coulter in that regard. But he's good at what he does. But the kind of message that he pushes forth that uh, the alt-right is, is not very accurate to what the roots of the movement is and what it's starting to become again. It's going back to its roots. Um, like, you take Milo, who is also, you know, he's a Catholic who thinks that being gay is immoral and that he'd be a much more moral person if he was straight and he doesn't really support any, any sort of uh, gay issues at all. And if he did talk about gay issues in a positive way, he would lose most of his support, at least if he's talking about gay issues in modern, industrialized, first world countries. Um, you know, you've, you've got him, and then you have people like, you know, Steven Crowder, who genuinely seems to view women as inferior. Um, it may not be a direct hatred of women, but it's a view that women are inferior. Maybe not to the degree of a MGTOW who think women are so inferior that they want to basically be gender separatists. Because that's pretty much what being a MGTOW is. It's being a gender separatist. Also, sort of a gender supremacist. So it's, it's, it's kind of both. Separatist and supremacist. Um, that's pretty much what uh, the MGTOW is. I'm sure there are some exceptions. There are people that, uh, you know, fall outside of the regular categories for that. But, uh, um, for the most part, that's what MGTOW is about. The things, these viewpoints that people like Crowder, and then there's the whole red ice thing, and there's Storm, whatever that site was, and there's, of course, Stormfront. If you agree with just a few of the ideas that the alt-right is shoving forth, why are you calling yourself an alt-righter? I mean, can you not take bits and pieces of almost any ideology and say, well, look, these things are good about this. Everything else is crap, but these things are good about it. Does that mean you're going to label yourself as, you know, having that ideology or that philosophy? And that's a lot of why I've talked about this, the alt-right, the way that I have. I'm not trying to say that everyone that's in the alt-right has these values that I've, that I've, that I've you know, mentioned, right? I'm saying that the movement stands for a particular set of things, and if you don't, if you don't agree with those things, and they're pretty important things, why would you label yourself as an alt writer? I say the same things about uh, uh, feminism. You know, why do you call yourself a feminist? if you don't agree with a lot of these things that a lot of feminists have pushed forth. 
Now I understand. Well, you know, technically, I, I I'm a feminist because I, you know, I, and you go into the uh, uh, the dictionary definitions and things like that. It's like I'm a feminist because of this, and you kind of go the Aaron Raw route, right? And it's like, yeah, well, you can, but people are going to assume that you have some of the beliefs of the people that are pretty extreme. You know, I mean, you're welcome to give, to give yourself that label. You know, just like you're you're welcome to give yourself the alt right label. Is that what you want to be associated with? Do you want people to think alt right when they see you? Oh, look, it's another alt righter. You know, I'll be honest. You know, I I look at some of the views from the alt right, including the the Milo types. Um, I look at it very similarly to to uh, people that don't talk oh, oh psyops and. Uh, uh, flat earthers and creationists. You know, I, I, I'll be honest, I have the same sort of emotional disdain for these groups as that. And I'm not going to try to pretend otherwise. Yes, I have these feelings about these groups. And it is difficult to, to shut those feelings off when talking about it. Because I know what things were like in the past. And when I see things coming up that shove forth the same shit that I was, I've been so proud of the United States as that, that we've been able to get past those things and that socially we've moved on. And as I've said before, we wouldn't have gay marriage if gay people and those that support gay people wouldn't have fought so hard to push that agenda. And I'll call it an agenda. I've got no problem calling that an agenda. There was an agenda to, to get pe gay people being seen as citizens just like everyone else. They may not be normal in, in, statistically, but there's a lot of people that aren't normal statistically, and I don't think there's anything wrong with not being considered normal statistically. But, um, you know, there there was an agenda for that, and without that, if we would have just been trying to shove forth, well, you know, we need to make sure marriage is legal for all uh, consenting adults, you know, it, it, 20 years later, you know, we, you know, and, and being the, the time we have now, because it's taken about 20 years uh, since it really started getting talked about, um, it, we wouldn't have that. It, it, we wouldn't have that kind of marriage of uh, just for all consenting adults, we wouldn't have that 50 years later. There are a number of activists who have shoved forth some ridiculous stuff. You have to accept me, you know, that sort of thing that I've talked about a number of times, you know. But, you know, we got through. There were the crazies, but we still got through, and we still were successful in getting gay marriage legalized. When gay marriage was legalized, I cried. Flat out, I cried. I, I was like, wow, this is amazing. We've come so far. It's amazing how far we've come. You know, social progress takes decades and decades and decades. And all the years of social progress, okay, can come to an end or even a full-on regression into the past and to an earlier period, kind of like how there are a number of people out there, and they're generally on the right, I'm sorry, who socially want this country to be more like it was in the 50s. You know, like one of the things is they want to essentially, in the ways they talk about things anyway, they essentially want to get rid of all the Civil Rights Act since the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And really, for all this regression to happen, all this going back socially to the 1950s, when we had McCarthyism, and uh, we put in God we trust on the rest of our money and added it under God into the pledge because everyone was so scared of communism. You know, we could go right back to that kind of mindset in less than a year. All of it. You know, social progress is fragile. It is. It's fragile. It's so easy for us to go back to some sort of a traditionalism. It's so easy. It can happen so quickly. And when I see 
some of this coming up, it's just like, wow, um, you know, are, are some of you, I mean, the progression that things are going and, and people are saying, well, they're just being noticed more. And I'm like, I, I hope you're right about that. But I don't think so. I think it's becoming stronger. I think it's becoming more powerful. And once this ball is rolling, um, there's going to be a lot of peer pressure for people to stay in it, even when it starts to blatantly, blatantly be full on white nationalism. Well, if you're not a, if you're, if, you know, I could see, I could see within a couple years. Well, if you're not a, if you don't support white nationalism, you're a regressive pussy. Uh, 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 maybe make some sort of a, a joke about gas chambers or something. And it's supposed to be funny at, by this point. You know, society can change that quickly. And you think I might be, be being extreme on this, but I mean, it wouldn't take very much for us to become as regressive socially as Russia. Wouldn't take much. Okay, progress, social progress is fragile, without a doubt. I'm not trying to say that if you consider yourself a, a, an alt-writer that you are a white nationalist. But we have to look at, you know, what are the roots of, of the alt-right and what is it heading towards, okay? On any movement, you, once you get the ball rolling, there is a direction that it heads. Where does it head? Where does it lead? If you can see that it's leading to a bad place, you know, uh, it's time to bail. Bail. It's bail time. That's what I'm hoping a lot of people do when they when they start to realize what you know what leads down that roll that road of where this ball is rolling. Where does it go? You know, I'm terrified for this country. Terrified. Because if Trump gets in these sorts of mindsets have a more of a chance to flourish than they ever have. We could essentially have a an internet civil war, a media civil war, because that's the way things would happen now. It's not going to be with fists, because we know it, it that doesn't really achieve much. We've kind of smartened up. So many people will tell me that I should not make generalizations shouldn't make don't make generalizations and they'll basically say well don't say bad things about an ideology say bad things about bad human behavior oh that's gonna help yay let's take two hours to say that bad people are bad and uh, we'll give some sort of psychology lesson or something right uh, no um, it, it, no, uh, people aren't going to listen to that. Uh, people want something to connect information to. And uh, it, it, some ideologies suck. They do. Blatantly racist ideologies suck. Blatantly uh, misogynistic ideologies suck. Blatantly homophobic ideologies suck. And I have the right to say that they suck. And my stating that those kind of ideologies that are against entire groups of people, um, stating that I don't like those things does not make, does not make me a bigot. Stating that I don't like those things, um, Yes, it does make me intolerant of intolerance, but that's not the same thing as being intolerant of a group just for existing. The, the, the idea of, of that being intolerant of intolerance is the same thing as being intolerant of anything else, I find to be utterly horseshit. But, you know, people don't want me to make any generalizations. Some, some, some people, some, 
who will say that sort of thing. Don't have me problems with me making generalizations about a number of things, but if I make generalizations about something that they think is, uh, you know, that they find important, suddenly it's just terrible. Don't make generalizations about the alt-right. Why? There's so many exceptions and there's so many... You have to explain things quickly because people don't really have much of a of an attention span. Most people will only, you know, I mean, it's been proven. People only watch about two minutes. Most people only watch about two minutes of a video unless it's really captivating for them. This idea that I should, you know, that I should give all these examples, give massive amounts of examples, and then talk about all the exceptions to things in order for me to just have, even have uh, uh, any sort of commentary about anything. I'm sorry, I don't want to be pedantic. I don't want to take, you know, 20 minutes to just give all these different examples and then 20 more minutes to two or 30 minutes to give all the exceptions. You know, if you if you want to look up these stats yourself, you want to look into this, you know, all that stuff yourself, go ahead. I'm not here to talk to to act like a fucking textbook. I'm not going to be a textbook. You know, if that's what works best for you and you think that's the most intelligent, then you know, do do it. You, you make the material. Now there are people that just say, well, you should you should just never make generalizations. It's like some sort of a rule, and I'm like, you gotta use you gotta make generalizations in order to explain things quickly. It's just kind of the way it is, and it's choosing what things to make generalizations about. That's the important thing. Um, you know, in some other video, I may make the things that I originally gave details about, I may make a generalized statement and then go into more details about the things that I didn't go into before. That's a lot of times how I do things. I do want to cover different sides, but people are only going to digest a certain amount of this stuff. People are not going to sit there and watch some hour and a half video. Well, some people would. Um, you know, for me, usually about a half hour is is the max for me, um, unless again it's really really enthralling, and I'll watch something longer than that. But people don't have very good attention spans. You know, I research the ways that people deliver information. I look into which ways that people give information that gets a lot of people to understand quickly. And that's what I want to try to do. You know, as I've said in other videos, but I'll bring up even another example. If there's someone that doesn't know jack shit about computers, and they want you to explain briefly how a computer works, are you going to give them all these details so that they, they have to, you know, come back to you several times just to get this basic, you know, a basic understanding, a really quick understanding. Um, are you going to, like, go into all these details about ones and zeros and how it breaks apart into other code and, and give this long explanation of what all the different parts on a motherboard do? Are you going to give some really generic, almost kid-like explanation just to give them a quick, quick idea of, you know, generally how computers work? And it's not going to be very accurate because, well, uh, generalizations aren't generally perfectly accurate. A lot of times they're only like 75% uh, accurate, but at least someone gets an idea of what's being said. And, to, and to, to break it down into a language that a kid may understand, um, you have to make generalizations. When it comes to this subject of the alt-right, I'm getting told that, well, I, I need, to, uh, need to, to give more details, but yet somehow not be pedantic. That's just not possible. You can't have something that's short and long at the same time slow and fast at the same time it's 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 an oxymoron it's 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 something that can't exist 
unless we're trying to split up our realities or something like that. Well, you know, in this reality, I, I said it this way, and in this reality, I said it this way. No, no, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, if you feel strongly about a subject and you think it should be talked about a certain way, make the video. Get out your cheap webcam or whatever. If you've never made a video, get out your cheap webcam and make a video. If you think there are much better ways of going about something, make your video. I mean, I know for myself, I can always improve the way that I make videos. They're the ways that I end up seeing how people misinterpret things. You know, oh, well, I shouldn't do that, or I should do this more. But there's always this point where, I mean, people want examples. So if I give some examples, people will say, well, why are you picking on these people? Okay, well, let's just talk about the subject. Well, you need to give examples. Then if you try to, to, to source your information, then people will come on and say, well, you know, that source isn't actually correct, and there's this one that says this and this and this and this. And I'm like, do you understand the gist of what I was saying? Well, you know, you really need to correct these sources. This, the, it wasn't 101.5, it was 101.6. That's nice. Did you understand what I was saying? Well, are you going to admit that it's 101.6? Yes, fine, it's 101.6. Now, do you know what I was saying? Well, you need to really be accurate in your information. You know what? Fuck you. Anyway, so no matter what I do, there are going to be complaints. There is no way for me to please everyone. And maybe some people don't realize that I make the videos that I do the way that I do for a reason. How would I explain something to someone if they were sitting in front of me? And that's how I would like to try to make my videos. There are independent thinkers within the alt-right. There are independent thinkers within feminism. There are independent thinkers within MGTOW. There are independent thinkers in just about any kind of movement. But if the things that you find important are not really that shared by the group that you associate with, that you want to label yourself as, then why label yourself that way? Anyway, I guess I'm repeating myself. Meow. <laughs>